Hey, electric vehicle owners or fans of EVs, I got an idea. There's lots of EV range test videos out there online. I mean, heck, I've done a few of them myself. There's also a lot of videos out there for just road tripping or day tripping ideas or things you could do in a day. But there seems to be a void that connects the two. That is to say from the perspective of what could you do or where could you go if you had an EV and you left your home or your starting point with a single charge and you came back close to empty without charging up anywhere along the way. What I'm trying to say is what would an EV one charge day trip look like? Well, that's my idea and I'm calling it the EV one charge day trip challenge. Let me demonstrate to you what I mean. For this debut one charge day trip challenge, I'll be driving a 2023 Kia EV6 GT, which is a performance oriented variant of the popular Kia EV6. With an output of 576 horsepower and 546 pound-feet of torque and a 0 to 100 km an hour time of just 3.5 seconds, it may not be the perfect option for a leisurely day trip, but it's the EV that I happen to have booked for the week that I wanted to test out this new concept. The higher power output of the EV6 GT is thanks to a front-mounted 160kW motor paired with a rear-mounted 270kW motor. It still utilizes the same 77.4 kilowatt hour nickel cobalt manganese battery pack used across all trims of the EV6, but has a reduced range of just 332 kilometers or 206 miles. However, the EV6 does offer lower output standard and long range variants with driving ranges stretching to as much as 499 kilometers or 310 miles. So as an actual EV model, the EV6 can take one charge day trips much longer than what I'll do in this instance. A limited time window will mean I likely won't stretch this trip to its range topping limits, but the concept at least will be presented and that's the main goal. Now I make my home in the town of Ajax, Ontario, which is an eastern suburb of Toronto. The good part about this is that there are several great day trip ideas I could try in several directions. And while I opted not to plan an exact route, I did decide that I'd head north and east towards an area of the province known as the Kawarthas. This area is popular with cottagers and visitors given the abundance of lakes as well as quaint and historic towns and villages that make for interesting places to stop along a day trip. Now after finishing a morning video shoot with clients, I headed north to start the drive, with my first stop being a popular country store located just south of the border between the city of Oshawa and the township of Scugog. Just in the northern part of Oshawa, Ontario, uh, behind me is this famous uh, chicken truck. I'd love to review that. I mean, the Kia EV6 GT is fun, but it's at the White Feather General Store. It's a really cool place in the northern part of Durham region. It's a country store. You can find just about everything in there from butter tarts to to close the fancy things. It's a place to see and I always enjoy coming here. And like I said, on a road trip, it's uh, one of my favorite spots to come and visit. One of the best things about uh, stopping at uh, White Feather here is uh, they make these apple fritters. They make them fresh every day. Trust me, it is so worth the drive. It's two bucks and it's so, it's still warm. Made today, it's around maybe 11 o'clock and it's warm. It's so, mm. oh damn, that's so good. Worth the drive, oh, love it. About 15 minutes north of White Feather within the township of Scugog is the picturesque town of Port Perry, which is located on the bottom edge of Lake Scugog. Its popular main street is filled with unique shops, restaurants, baked goods, and a pub called Jester's Court, which is known to be haunted. Port Perry is a popular weekend day trip destination for people from Toronto and surrounding areas. A couple of fun facts is that Port Perry is the birthplace of Daniel David Palmer, who is the founder of chiropractic medicine. It was also where the 2004 movie Welcome to Mooseport, starring Ray Romano, Gene Hackman, and Maura Tierney, was filmed. When through Port Perry, I aimed the EV6 GT towards my next stop, which was the town of Lindsay, which is where the administrative offices of the city of Kawartha Lakes is located. Lindsay is a quaint town of about 22,000 people that offers a variety of experiences including theater, festivals, historic sites, museums, artisan studios, as well as streets lined with locally owned shops, galleries, and restaurants. A fun fact about Lindsay was that back in 2012, over 9,300 residents, or one in seven, came together to shoot what at the time was the world's largest lip dub which is a video in which a large group of people lip sync and dance to a medley of songs. 
Lip dubs are shot in one long continuous take with no cuts or edits. And their 10 minute Lindsay lip dub video, which is really fun to watch, can still be found today on Vimeo. When you go day tripping without a particular route to follow, part of the fun is pointing yourself in a general direction and going at a pace that lets you notice things along the way. Being in a vehicle that rides well and is comfortable also helps. And while the EV6 GT, with its firm planted stance and various drive modes to meet your need, does offer a smooth ride, the performance-oriented seats in the GT were probably not ideal for a long day behind the wheel. The side bolsters work well when pushing hard turns and launching in the incredible GT mode, but in this case I probably would have better enjoyed the standard seats that are found in the regular EV6 which I reviewed last year, and I'd encourage you to watch that review once you're finished watching this one. From Lindsay I headed northeast, skirting along the shoreline of Sturgeon Lake, where a road to a boat launch provided me with a chance to stop for a moment and to take in the lakeside view. Further down the highway where Sturgeon Lake connects to Pigeon Lake is the community of Bob Cajun, a village often known as the hub of the Kawartas, given its popularity as a destination for visitors, cottagers, and boaters. The Trent Severn Waterway, a 32-lock, 386-kilometer historic waterway connecting Lake Ontario to Georgian Bay, runs through Bob Cajun as well and it can be fun to watch the manually operated locks operated by Parks Canada staff during its open season. Bob Cajun is also where you'll find a location of one of the most beloved businesses in the Kawarthas, that being Kawartha Dairy, and their oh so amazingly good ice cream. You cannot come to Bob Cajun or to Kawartha without stopping at Kawartha Dairy. This is legend, there's Kawartha Dairies all over the province. Uh, this is the Bob Cajun, that's a little uh, salted caramel truffle on the bottom and death by chocolate up front. Oh, I love it. Mm. Road trip. Okay, a little bit of context here. I'm actually at a uh, charging stop, a DC fast charger uh, on my one charge road trip. And that's only because I did not leave the house at 100%. I, I wasn't able to, I forgot. I So I left the house at 80, 81%. So I'm just doing a little top up here. I'm at 57% right now. Uh, so I'm going to go up to about 70 just to make it as if it were 100. And the interesting fact is I'm in beautiful Bob Cajun, Ontario in the Kawartha Lakes. And I had to stop here because they just installed this uh, DC uh, flow charger here. So it's a really interesting fact. And I thought might as well let people know because this is cottage country and it'll be popular in the summer. So that's why I'm here. I'm not cheating. I'm just trying to make sure I really was at 100% for the full drive. The idyllic setting and escapism found in and around Bob Cajun also inspired the much beloved Canadian rock band that tragically hip to write and release the song Bob Cajun in 1999. It's often regarded as one of the band's most successful and loved songs with deeply meaningful lyrics that have been part of countless cottage sing-alongs or well, even carpool karaoke material while on EV day trips. It was in Bob Cajun the constellation reveal themselves one star at a time. Given some time constraints I had on this day, I decided that Bob Cajun would be my northern apex of the day trip route, so I aimed myself south for a drive along the western shoreline of Pigeon Lake with the goal of making my next stop the village of Omimi. The small community of about 1,500 people located along the Trans-Canada Highway has one notable claim to fame as it was for several years in the late 1940s and early 1950s, the childhood home of legendary Canadian musician Neil Young. Continuing south from Omimi, I was aiming toward the small community of Bethany and driving through the Bethany Hills. But while en route, I stumbled upon the first thing on my EV One Charge day trip that I had not expected to see. Located on Ski Hill Road was the site of the Wu Tai Shan Buddhist Garden. Sitting on 535 acres of land that was purchased in 1990, the Wu Tai Shan Buddhist Garden has been under construction since 2011. Now, due to COVID, completion of the garden has been delayed actually until later this year. Now, I wasn't allowed to get past the construction gate, but based on what I could see, as well as the information provided to me by the gate attendant and online, 
This promises to be a beautiful and tranquil place of reflection and meditation for Buddhists, as well as a spectacular place to visit for all when it finally opens. With time not being on my side on this day, I had to make a more direct line back home. While I always try to make an effort while in this area with an EV to drive by some of the many wind turbines generating clean energy into our provincial grid, the rest of my day trip was attached to highways and expressways all the way home. In the end, my first attempt at a one charge day trip took about five and a half hours and I drove just under 240 kilometers or 150 miles. Had I been able to start earlier or stay out later, I easily could have added another 80 or 100 kilometers and made it home with energy to spare. But this is all food for thought and ideas to keep in mind as I consider future one charge day trips whenever I have an EV book for a weekly review. Okay, so what do you think of the idea? Where would you go if you had an EV and did a one charge day trip challenge? Why don't you take that challenge? Why don't you maybe give me some ideas? In fact, leave comments if you have ideas of what might make a good challenge, not just in my area of the world, but wherever you are, and hopefully we can sort of spread some ideas to see what's out there. If you do take one and you put it somewhere online, send me the link, put it in the comments, and even use the hashtag OneChargeDayTrip. Let's see if we can get something going here and spread an idea that's out there. And the last thing you could do, since you're already online, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, make sure you've rung the bell so that you're notified every time I upload something new, including videos like this. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this idea and a different way of taking a look at EVs. I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching.